Hey, howdy everyone. I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin and I'm going to finish up the discussion around feature projection. We've already covered principal components analysis. We've covered multidimensional scaling and let's finish up with what I think will, you will find is a pretty fascinating topic of random projection and how it could be applied to what I would say would be massive multivariate or high dimensional types of settings that we might find ourselves in in machine learning. Now, so let's set up the problem here. Imagine we have to work in a very fast manner. We want to do dimensionality reduction by a transform, or maybe I should say a projection from M dimensional to a lower dimensional space P. Now, the main constraints we have is we may not have all of the data available to us right now. So we can't calculate up front the covariance matrix nor dissimilarities between all the possible pairs. When would this happen? This would be happening if we were working with real-time data that's being fed to us. We can't adapt to the data. We need to just move forward. Also, we might be in a situation where we can't afford to calculate orthog an orthogonal transformation. It's just too expensive. We can't do that. So the question is, can we just transform the training samples to a lower dimensional space with a random transform? And so that's a really kind of wild idea. Can we just go ahead and formulate a random transform and apply it to our data? So our original data is going to be our original training samples, M by N, where M is the number of features we're working with, which should be large in this case, and N is the number of samples. Our transformation, our random matrix, is simply going to be P by M, where P is the reduced dimensionality, M is the original dimensionality, and the result will be this linear combination of the features, which will be now P by N, P of reduced dimensionality by n number of samples that are available to us. And then we can go ahead and work with that in a lower dimensional space and do all our calculation. Remember the curse of dimensionality and all those good reasons we want to be in lower dimensional space. So the question is, can we do this? Is this actually something we can do? And so it turns out that there's a very interesting result available to us. It turns out that in a high dimensional space, there exists a much larger number of almost orthogonal than orthogonal directions. In fact, it turns out if we take random vectors and the dimensionality is large enough, that we will likely be with high probability sufficiently close to orthogonal to assume we're orthogonal. In other words, if we take our random matrix, the transform multiplied by itself, that it will be close enough to the identity matrix. Our random vectors will be close enough to orthogonal if the dimensionality is large enough. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty surprising. Now, we can carry on with this lemma from Johnson and Lindenstrauss that shows us that points in a high dimensional space can be linearly embedded in a space of much, much lower dimension in such a way that distances between the points are nearly preserved. In fact, we can calculate for a given data size n and a desired level of error, another percentage of error, the minimum number of dimensions p that we can project to with a high probability based on a random projection. So we can look at this form right here, which would tell us that the lawn, natural log of the number of samples available to us divide it by the error term to the square. And then just to put some numbers in here and just try it out, we could take an example. If we had 1,000 data and we were okay with about 10% error in the pairwise distances, we could project randomly to about 690 features or dimensionality. Now, what really blow, should blow your mind is that this result does not depend on the original dimensionality of the problem M. It only depends on the number of sample data that are available and on the required error level that you're, you're willing to live with. Now, if you were going to play around with this equation a bit, you're going to find very quickly that 
it, there's not a real practical avenue to working with low dimensional problems. It just wouldn't make very much sense. But you have to imagine cases in which we have a high, very high level of dimensionality, in which case this result is very helpful to us and we can use it in order to solve practical problems. If you want to visualize the behavior and get a sense of that, we can go to the scikit-learn docs and look specifically at a variety of plots. One of them is the bounds provided to us by this lemma. For the case of plotting on the x-axis, the allowable error going from 0 to 100% and the minimum number of dimensions that you would have to work with for the cases of number of samples going from 100 all the way up to 1 million. And you can start looking at it and very quickly you can see that for a case of just 100 samples, if you were, if you want to get down to 20%, you're talking about still having a huge number of dimensions. It wouldn't be very practical for you if you in fact had originally a not that large of a dimensional data set. So you could recognize that this result indicates that the practical use of random projection would probably would be limited to cases in which you have very large dimensional data sets with a lot of features to work with. So how does this get done in practice? One common methodology is Gaussian random projection. It's very, very simple. All we have to do is make an M by P matrix of standard normal random values. So standard normal simply means Gaussian distributed with a mean of zero variance equals to the standard deviation equal to one. And so then what we can do is we can take that matrix, that random matrix of Gaussian distributed values, and we can apply it by matrix multiplication to the original training sample feature matrix. And if we do that, we're going to have to scale it. Now we'll scale it by one divided by the square root of P, where P is the lower dimension that we want to work in. What we're doing is we're accounting for the impact on the pairwise distances of in fact moving to a lower dimensional space. They're going to all be discounted because as I mentioned before in the previous lecture, everything's going to seem a little bit closer to each other in the lower dimensional space. We've got to account for that. And we'll get ourselves to the new predict projected features in the lower dimensional space. So that's about it. When would we want to use random projection? Well, specifically if our problem is such high dimensionality that the standard calculations are too expensive for say classical or metric MDS as discussed in the last lecture. We may also find ourselves in a situation where we have high dimensionality and the number of samples are so sparse that we can't reliably calculate covariances. And we may choose to use this method instead of PCA in that case, because we can't really get at the covariance matrix and the eigenvalues, eigenvectors of it. Also, and probably most importantly, you may find yourself in a circumstance in which you don't have the data in advance to do any calculations. In fact, we're working with real-time data. We need to do the projection without seeing all of the data. We need a non-adaptive alternative to, say, the case of MDS, which requires the pairwise distances, or PCA, which requires all the covariances between the features. We need to work without being able to make those calculations in advance. And so random projection provides you a very good methodology to work with this type of a real-time situation, non-adaptive. What about computational effort? Because this is one of the great selling points about the overall methodology of random projection. It's extremely cheap. In fact, if you think about it, it's just drawing random Gaussian values once to build the projection matrix, R matrix, and then it's just matrix multiplication. That projection using or matrix multiplication is an operation of just O times M times P, N number of data, M original features, and P, the reduced dimensionality we're working with. If you tried to run a methodology like PCA, you in find, fact would find that the number of operations is quite large. The covariance calculation is an m squared to n times n. The eigenvalue decomposition is an m cubed. And then the projection would be just like regular matrix multiplication shown before. So you save a lot. In fact, if you run some numbers for fun and you test this, it's not a reduction in computation by about an order of magnitude or more. 
So that was our, that ends our discussion around feature projection. We covered principal components analysis. We covered multidimensional scaling. And just now we had a very short video to discuss random projection. There's code available on GitHub with principal components, with multidimensional scaling, with random projection. The pr principal components analysis has code in R. I have both I have also have it in Python and I have Python for multidimensional scaling and for random projection. All right, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm also the Geostats guy on Twitter, on YouTube with Geostats guys lectures and also on GitHub with my repository. I love to share everything I teach at the University of Texas. All of my lectures are made public for anybody, including my students, my former students to use for review, and also for working professionals who are interested to be able to develop new skills. And of course, I guess for other students around the world. I hope this content is helpful to you. I always welcome any feedback. All right. Thank you very much. Take care.